Okay, good morning guys. Um, I've got a bit of a different one for you today. I've been doing terrain, I've been doing various other bits and bobs on recent streams. Last time we did the challenge miniature for February, uh, which was real good fun. Um, that model, by the way, I've done all the supports and everything for it. Um, and it's available on Discord as a download. So if you uh, head over to my Patreon or the Discord server, uh, you'll be able to grab the files for the little um, Beatrice the Bumble Shroom. As a freebie until the end of March. Good morning, Paul, over on Facebook. Thank you for the uh, follow this morning. Okay, so today we're doing um, rat men. So uh, not wanting to use the um, the particular term, but it was my first army when I first started um, collecting miniatures for fantasy games uh, back in the nineties. Um, Got everything I had was metal back then. There was the Hero Quest plastics, I think, and the uh, the single pose plastics that were a little bit kind of, you know, they're all samey, they're all one pose. And I had a the my first actual proper complete army. So so far, what I've done, um, got a twenty eight millimeter scale human uh, just to kind of benchmark them against. I've made a kind of a hunched posed um, kind of Ratman body with talon hands uh, and I've done a bunch of heads so what I was thinking was rather than trying to do a new head for each one so we've made uh, let me so, uh, so I'm gonna show you so we've got this head we've got uh, this one we've got this one this one this one that was a little bit friendly that one is so <laughs> this one um, this one and this is the this is the template one I made. So what I basically did was I uh, I don't know if I've left it in there actually or if I changed it. So I started with a, a rat skull that I'd made a while back um, when I did some skeletal rats, and then <clears throat> basically added the eyeballs, the ears. Uh, I added a little pad in there for the cheek. You can see the jaws still separated, and then I just take these, uh, change the pose of the mouth. Move the cheeks, repose it, change the position of the nose, move the uh, facial features about a little bit, and then uh, dye and mesh everything together. And well, I say everything. I kept the eyeball separate so I can still I can hear I've uh, stuffed up a little bit. I've just noticed on this one, so I can use move topological now. Click on there and I just pull it back so I can leave the eye more pronounced. So you want to make sure there's enough. to some extent. Just gotta make sure that there's enough of a kind of a, a distance between the eyeball and the end of the eyelid so that when you actually print the model and you paint it, that there's a physical differentiation between the two parts. Okay, so let me hide my 28 millimeter dude. Let's get rid of him for a minute. So we've got this uh, rat dude now. What I need to do first is uh, I need to clone this body multiple times. We're going to make lots of poses. Uh, I've put uh, there's a round base on here at the moment. I did add a square base to the scene, but it looks like I might have deleted it or forget to save it after I did it. Save it. Okay, so what I need to do, uh, we're just going to add a 25 millimeter base into this. So my ruler at the back is 100 millimeters. I want it visible. Uh, what I'm going to do is going to move this over here. I want the center point of my ruler. Let's put transparency on. The center point of my ruler, I want to be at 15, uh, 17 and a half mil. So we've got, um, let me just turn the Ratman's body off, so you can see through it. So the centre of the, ma uh, the model here I want to be, uh, so that's 
10 mil, 11, 12, 13, 14. Actually, it's 12 and a half, isn't it, for 25 mils? My maths is bad. Okay, so we want 12.5 millimeters, which is about there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink this down now until this, because this is coming down uh, at an equal distance at all sides. I'm just going to bring it down until we hit the bottom of that ruler just there. And now this should be uh, 10, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Actually, I've, I've screwed that a touch. That's better. So we've got a 25 millimeter base now. Uh, what I'm going to do is that is square. I want it to be as thick as that other base there, which is about two, three mil. Not being too precise with it. It's a uh, benchmark more than anything else. I'm not going to be printing this and using it. Uh, and then the only other thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to taper the top. So we're just going to go into uh, the tool mode here. We're going to go taper. And just on this top one here, I just want to bring it in just a touch. I don't want to taper it too much. That's too much. There. And then we're just going to pull that straight. Okay, so now we've got a little beveled, even bevel all the way around. And it's like a fantasy war game with square base. That's 25 millimeters, which I believe is the current standard. Okay. And what I can do there now is I can position that, we'll put that underneath the model, get rid of the circular one. I mean the circle's 25mm square, uh, 25 mil round, so it's still the same size base if that makes sense, it's just a different shape. Uh, hmm, what else stuffed up here? Oh that's why. Cancel this. Sorry. It appears I opened a tool rather than the uh, thing, so all the stuff I've done, I've lost, I've left in another file. Okay, right here is where we actually got to. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So I added uh, leg wraps um, to the wrap. I've made a few triangular shields. And I've made a few round shields, a couple, couple of round shields. We've got a few swords being made, different shapes, different styles. This is going to give us a little bit of a head start on getting things posed, posed up. This one, the hook one, I have noticed that the blade is too thin. So I'm just going to mask the blade, I'm just going to widen it out. Okay, there we go. <clears throat> so we're going to make some um, maces, we'll do a few. We'll do a few blunt weapons, we'll do a few axe type things, a couple of cleaver type weapons. Let's make a little selection of different things. Um, and I'm going to pose the bodies up. So what I've done here is I've added the, um, I haven't added the tail, I'm going to keep the tail separate for a specific reason. When this goes into a metal moulding, the tails are not going to work, um, more than likely. So to get the tails to look vaguely respectable um, in a metal version, they're going to have to be done separately. So they're going to have to be cast separately and then plugged in. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to have a little pin on the bum. Uh, so the the rat's um, arse is going to have a little hole in it, and the tail's going to have a little peg on the end, they're all going to be plugged in. So there'll be a selection of different tails, you plug the tail in. Um, shields are going to be kept separate as well. Hey Grimsy, how are you doing? So the shields will be kept separate for casting reasons again, so they're quite thick. They'll cast, they'll come pressed down in the, um, the mould, so there's always a bit of mould shrinkage. 
Um, so yeah, we're going to take uh, everything here. We need to make sure that everything fit, fits into a flat plane. Um, <coughs> the limits we're going to have with moulding, uh, if I show you... I can demonstrate it here on a, on a file, I think. So if we take this as one half of the mould, right? And then we duplicate that and we do a second half. We're going to make these polygroups different, okay? I want two completely different colours, so let's pick a different... Uh, that'll do. Alright, so we pick these two completely different colours. And what we need to make sure is that no part of the model is wholly in just one half of the mould. So if I bring this back here, you'll hopefully see what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so if this tail goes off in an S shape, round like this, that tail is going to be completely within this mould half, which it can't happen. So the tail is going to have to be posed so that it falls along this dividing line on the mould. Um, now you can the mold the mold doesn't have to be this shape. The mold could be orientated, or, or sorry, the model in the mold could be orientated like this, or like this, or it could be like that. There's lots of different ways they can be positioned, uh, but ultimately you've only got that. Morning, Alston. Cheers, mate. Uh, oh, I haven't logged into that. Sorry, mate. <laughs> the prompt will work in a minute, dude. I promise. So yeah, so the uh, the mold has to be um, has to have a mold line like that. It's going to be a straight line through the model when you do metal casting. It it does work, Elston. I just forgot to I loaded up the uh, the little prompt engine thing, but then I forgot to actually log into it, so it's not actually connected. How are you doing anyway, mate? You all ready for chill con yet? So yeah, so that's what we've got to work towards on this anyway, is making sure that that allowance is catered for. So we'll try and do that as we go along. So I need to take this body, we're going to uh, duplicate it a few times, we're going to pose the legs I think, and then we're going to cut the legs off and I'm going to pose the upper body. We'll probably end up having two or three variations of each. And from that what we want to do is we want to make a front rank that consists of champion, standard bearer and musician. Um, and then we want to take that front rank up to 10 models. Now, once the front rank's been made up to 10 models, those existing models can be duplicated and recycled through the back rows. It's not a problem. But what we can also do is, because I've got all these extra heads spare, I can switch heads out on the models. We can change different um, different components. So my idea is to make this in a kind of not a modular fashion where you guys are doing the building and whatever else. Um, but we're going to do it in such a way that I've, I've built myself a kit that I can use to kind of create multiple different models. And then we'll still customise them a little bit. We'll still add little bits and bobs onto them to try and make them all a little bit unique. But this is going to get a lot of models made in a very short space of time and have them all looking um, unique enough that it's not going to kind of look samey. What's that then, mate? Uh, very good. Busy, busy. Still getting requests to print trophies, which is frustrating. Have we done all the trophies, mate? getting extras are they okay so just so I can isolate these a little bit easier I'm just going to mask off the arms and the hands streamlabs couldn't connect okay that's bad is the stream running still <laughs> oh, give me, ping me a message offline, mate. We'll have a, have a chat later. I thought they only had so many categories, though. Are they, are they adding more categories to the painting competition or something? Cool. Make them a little bit more of a T pose just so I can get into all those little nooks and crannies. Ah, right, fair play. 
Okay, so first thing we're going to add is um, let's go for the good old little mantle. Three to four for the gaming category. <laughs> now this one reminds me already of uh, remember Marielle of Redwall, <clears throat> the book I read when I was a uh, when I was a kid at school, and I always remember like little. Little rat with the uh, Robin Hood type um, aesthetic running around on the uh, castle battlements. Yeah, I think I might get the Red Wall books for Jacob, you know, because he's, he's really, I mean, I ain't being funny, man, the, the kid reads like a machine, he's, um, he's powered through every single book I've given him, um, he's got literally hundreds of books, um, and he's got about, all he's got left to read now is a Legend of Zelda um, anime comic collection <clears throat> that my uh, mum bought him as a birthday present, uh, as a Christmas present, sorry. He's also got The Hobbit and um, The Lord of the Rings, but I think he's finding The Lord of the Rings is a little bit hardcore for him at the moment. But I think the Red Wall books are probably just a, a nice little bit of... Um, you watch, he'll read the Red Wall books and then get into bloody bur burrows and badges, won't he? <laughs> Which, to be fair, I'll be completely fine with that. <coughs> <coughs> Guys, if you haven't seen Burrows and Badgers, go and have a little look, man. Oath Sworn Miniatures. Lovely miniatures. Right, we'll just use that one as it is like that. I'm just going to trim up the edges. I'm not going to add any rips and tears to anything at the moment at this stage. Everything's going to look pristine and new. I'm going to tatter the hell out of it once it's on each model so every model has a different appearance again. Because that couple of minutes of uh, tattering things up <coughs> is going to really make it uh, different. Right, Grimsy, let's see what you got going, mate. You know, some kind of toad. <coughs> or is this a mushroom? Is, is this your mushroom character? If it's not group, awesome mate. Post it into the um the challenge one down the bottom here, mate. Pop it in down here. So we can keep all the challenge ones together then. <coughs> It's definitely got mushroom vibes, even at this early stage, it's got mushroom vibes going on. Okay, so there's one hood. Uh, where is it now? Call it a mantle. Duplicate it. I'm going to make this one into a hood with a big trailer bit at the back. Now remember, this is going to be uh, metal cast. So I need to uh, make sure I 
that it can be cast. So we, we can't have undercuts. So here, it's going to extrude that back into the back completely. Oh yeah, yeah. Let me uh, let me run it up for you, mate. The um, so the challenge here. Scroll to the top of this page. Um, so February, I'm running a challenge. Looks like the music's gone a bit loud. Let me just turn this down a touch. Okay, so February's challenge. What we've got is um, I've used the Fantasy Genesis book. So. Uh, if you haven't seen this book, get it. It's brilliant. If you're an artist and you get ever you ever get that kind of creative block where you're struggling what to do, you roll a few dice, generate some prompts, and you can use this for like some massive like inspirational kicks. <clears throat> so I did the same thing. So uh, there's a 32 millimeter base mesh, which is like the one I'm using on screen here. Um, let me show you this guy. But my my kind of like more finished version of it, where I've already sculpted some anatomy and a face and things like that. So we've got that as a uh, as a standard point, starting point. Um, and then we've got uh, in the book, mate. You basically you've got a load of um, it talks about kind of like merging characters together, merging creatures, uh, taking all these different um, like using things like uh, berries and flowers and grasses and plants and different animals and things and how you can how you can draw those bits and how to focus in on different elements and extract ideas from the prompts. <clears throat> and then obviously it gives you the big list of prompts at the end. Really, really good book all the way through. It's done by uh, Chuck Lucas, who's um, he's a, a Magic the Gathering artist. A uh, really good one as well. Um, but the link's in, it, the link, the link's in the uh, prompt here, in the um, things you can grab that book here. <clears throat> so, yeah, so... Uh, the base models there are available for you. Click that button, click that link there to download the base mesh. It's um, for your scale reference. So load that in the scene first, and then everything you sculpt is relative to that. Then. Um, so basically, the prompts we're going to use are B slash wasp, mushroom, timid slash bashful, swinging a weapon, electric bolts, pen slash paintbrush. Um, now all of that is a little bit abstract, so you don't have to be literal and do. You know, a mushroom man, or you know, a bee character, or whatever else. You can use like design elements from those different things to create stuff. So the first guy who did a, an actual sculpt in this was uh, was Dan Starling, and he did this character. So he used a female as his uh, as his um, as his base model. Gave her a kind of a crazy mushroom hammer. Uh, we've got elements of bee coming in in like the furry collar, the goggles around the head. Uh, the like stinger on the end of the hair, these like wing-like um, coattails, let's call them, and um, the hair's kind of, I believe, got kind of like a, a bit of a paintbrush tip kind of vibe going on. So there might be an element of that in there. Uh, so he's got a good amount of the things, and obviously when he's gone on to finish the model, he's then included um, a kind of a weapon swinging pose. So this is this is the this is the final piece that Dan's done. So he's going to get that print ready for us, and we're going to load that, and we'll put that up on the uh, on the site if he's happy for us to do it. We'll share that with everyone, so you can come and grab this file as well that Dan's done. Uh, then we've got uh, this one which uh, Adam did. Adam's one of my uh, sculpting students. We've been teaching him um, the ropes on ZBrush. Uh, he's picking stuff up really fast. This is a couple of hours' work. He sat down and just cracked this one out. Um, it's a little, uh, a little bee type beetle mushroom um, spory thing that's a little bit shy. What do you call it? A shy shroom or something, I think it was. It was I can't remember now. Yeah. Oh, the scared shroom bee. So it wasn't. This was. This wasn't intended to be a, a perfect model. It was just trying to kind of exercise his brain in the kind of the, using the prompts and trying to get something out of there. 
Um, and then I did these guys on stream. This was my last stream, so I did these on my last stream. Uh, this is the base pose I did, and this is my timid pose. Although I, I, I kind of think it looks injured. Um, so this was like two hours of sculpting, um, and like half an hour of research, like gathering images off the internet that we were going to use um, as, as kind of reference images and stuff. So yeah, so kind of, kind of went through, did all like the mushroom, uh, like the, the little fins that you get on the stalks, and then some mushroom type thing, uh, like texture on the uh, abdomen and the bee thing. We've got the bee face, we've got the big uh, hairy back, hairy neck kind of thing. The six limbs, obviously. Um, and then there's like a little lightning bolt pattern just around here, separating the thorax and the abdomen, which you, you can't really see too much, to be honest. It's my attempt to incorporate it, but it was uh, barely, barely visible. It's just in here somewhere. And I say my pose, kind of still think it looks a bit injured. It's supposed to be like shy and bashful kind of thing, but I'm not sure I pulled it off entirely as I was expecting. Um, but they're both available. I've put the link on the Discord now, so you can go and download these guys. They're not supported or anything like that, but they're they're free. So you know, go and help yourself if you want to print them off. They are cute. Uh, and we also had. Uh, James did this. He's another one of my um, my sculpting students. So we did the tree. We've got like some beak, uh, some honeycomb, um, from, like a beehive hanging from the branch here. Got the mushrooms growing. A couple of random skulls because who doesn't love a good skull or two? Uh, and then I think he's got a couple of other mushrooms growing around the side of the tree around the back there. So we've got a bit more fungal kind of incorporation. He's taken obviously a lot more literal uh, interpretation of the brief. Um, and then obviously the tree stump wasn't part of the brief, but obviously he's used it as a delivery mechanism. Um, and then we've got a pen in the hand, so obviously he's writing. So he's used a good few of the prompts there. <clears throat> but you can see obviously you can interpret in, interpret it, sorry, in a very a very literal way, like I kind of did. Um, or you can kind of use more of the abstract ideas, like Daniel's done. Yeah, yeah, I've got um. I've got one slot left on my on my uh, on my Patreon for one to one tuition still. So I give the guys um, they get a couple of hours, a uh, couple of hours a month, uh, one to one, um, where we kind of live stream together. Um, not live stream, sorry. We get on a Discord uh, like video call. And then do a little bit of sculpting together and kind of look through some technique and whatever else they need. I think in James's case, he's well versed in sculpting. He just needs a little bit of accountability to make sure he gets stuff done. Um, and I'm just kind of helping him to kind of, you know, get him on task and vet him and get him up to speed and stuff. So people need different things. So yeah, I, I, I do, I do all of that kind of stuff. I'm going to start recording more tutorials as well. So there'll be a lot more tutorials in the uh, on the YouTube channel coming up soon. Um, but the the Patreon now actually is all geared up around um, it's geared up around like learning to sculpt rather than getting miniatures. So I've got like my component library link, uh, my component library is linked in. Sorry, so let me just find that for you. And I'll show you. Um, where is it? Now? Component libraries. We're coming to here. We've got all of these bits and bobs. There's load loads of stuff. All categorized accessories, anatomy, animals, clothing. Um, so in animals we've got like crabs, familiars, crow, eagle, owl, rat one, rat two, scorpion, vampire, bat, vulture, and woo the little hamster. All of these things you can use and incorporate them into your own uh, models. Uh, now they can't be incorporated as is, so you can't just stick them in and just go for it. But what you can do is you can use that as a starting point, which you'll see me doing today, um, which helps you to kind of speed up the rest of the sculpting process. Uh, and anybody who joins on the Patreon gets access to this library, so you can just feel free to go and help yourself to whatever in there. And uh, you know, there is like loads of stuff, and I'm going to start adding more stuff into there as well, along with some more um, like Z tools and things. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff for you if you're learning to sculpt or if you're kind of a sculptor generally. Um, I mean, it's particularly useful if you've got sculpting ability in the first place, where you've done, um, say, you've done digital work for video games or something like that, and you want to transfer your skills into doing miniatures. Um, I can kind of obviously give you all the guidance and the help and the tuition you need to kind of move from 
one form of digital art into a different one because there are different considerations you need to be aware of them to be able to kind of make a good miniature <clears throat> all right that all said let's get back to doing this little rat man dude I've got, I, I keep nearly going to say an s word i'm not allowed to say on stream so let's uh let's be very careful with that one don't want to be getting in trouble Let's just merge all of this together. Now I can't go too deep with this again because the details have got to be shallow. They can't be too... Um, I need to step back from what I would normally do if I'm making a, a digital model to be able to kind of have these done in metal. And one of the reasons for doing it in metal is obviously they don't make them in metal anymore. Um, and I've been working with the guys at uh, Footsore on um, some Baron's War bits and bobs, so we've been doing some terrain. And they've offered to uh, cast some of my stuff up in metal and sell it for me. And unfortunately, I think a lot of the stuff I've made so far isn't really good for the change. Um, you have to sculpt a model ideally with making it in metal in mind um, and if you don't then it's quite difficult then to without spending a lot of time and effort to then go back and reverse engineer models to be produced um, it's one of the things that early on when I was doing this professionally I did end up doing a lot of work trying to actually fix people's Kickstarter models so we had Kickstarters going out where you know they were selling stuff online and it was um, people were commissioning sculpts but they were getting them from like the video game artists paying loads of money for them and then the models that they were getting actually weren't fit for purpose because they needed to be casted and moulded um, and everything was just too thin and fiddly and it just wasn't viable um, and I actually did do quite a lot of um, kind of miniature adjustments and repairs and stuff like that to make models that people had already spent a fortune on um, castable which obviously isn't ideal if you're the person spending the money um, but I think it was at a point when there was a lot of people getting into making miniatures um, before like, the 3D printing revolution um, and yeah there was just a lot of a lot of people kind of dabbling in the market who weren't quite equipped to do it properly with the like, knowledge and information rather than tools, if that makes sense. Okay, so there's a hood. Morning, Rich. How we doing, mate? Well, a couple of mantles ready. Uh, let's do a couple of like little shoulder pads, maybe. Actually, let's go loincloth first. Let's do loincloth and legs. How are you doing today, Rich, anyway? Right, delete the... Uh... Oh, man. Well, I, I keep wanting to say a certain word beginning with S that I, I need to really refrain from. Um, but basically what I've decided I'm going to do I'm having a chat to um, 
the guys at Futsal. And then we're talking about uh, doing some metal casting of some of my miniatures, but a lot of the stuff. Oh, thanks for the resub, Rich. A lot of the miniatures that they um, that I've got, they wanted to kind of like make into metal, um, but because they've not been sculpted to be cast in metal, I haven't met certain requirements in the sculpts, which means I'd have to go back and do a lot of amendment work. And also, you're going to be like they're going to be selling like one or two models, which seems pointless. And because of certain games, just come back to the. Uh, back to the world but there's also obviously there's still like a one page rules version and then there's like uh, Kings of War and all that other stuff because you've got all these other kind of like mass war games and stuff and there's a bit more eyes on them now um, this particular army is not getting supported going forwards uh, I believe and I thought do you know what if they want to make some metal models let's see if we can make something and cater for some of the old boys who you know, like a nice metal army, um, but all that's available out there for them is plastics and stuff. Um, so there'll probably still be a set available as STL files. I'll still sell the STLs, but they're going to be sculpted for metal casting. So rank and file, uh, rat men. Um, I need guys with spears and shields. We need guys with swords and shields. The shields are all going to be separate. How do you open the file with a 32mm miniature? Uh, download it and just import it into ZBrush, mate. It's a, it's a Z tool file, I think. So if we just go on the right-hand side over here, just go to Load Tool. Uh, and then you'll be able to select that from your downloads. Um, and it'll drop into your file. And basically what you'll have is... Uh, you'll have the base mesh, which is not this one, but it's similar to this. With a little bit more anatomy sculpted in. And a face and everything else and some proper hands. Um... So you have the anatomy of all of that ready, <clears throat> and um, you'll have a 100mm ruler, the upright one there. Now that is why that is 100mm in the Y axis, so when you do your export you have to make sure that you've got that set there. Um, and then we've got the round base which is 25mm round diameter. Um, but yeah, basically, as long as you don't mess with the scaling of this ruler and the guy, anything you sculpt in that same scene will come out scaled to 32 millimeters. So yeah, Rich. So the, basically, the, the plan is uh, we're going to make a, um, a a champion, a standard bearer, and a musician. So we've got the command group. <clears throat> and then we're going to do seven miniatures that are going to make the front rank of 10 models. Um, from those seven models, what I might do is various head swaps and things, because I've made like, I mean, again, I'll, so I'll solo mode, mode it and show you now, because you probably missed it originally. So I've done uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, Seven rat heads, and I've got a template one here that I made. This is this is what I used. This is uh, based on the rat skull model I did from the um, the warlocks rat skeleton. So I used the rat skull, made the uh, the face a little bit more fleshed out, added ears, eyes, eyelids, and then uh, chucked in some cheeks. But all of these heads are made. They're, they're pretty solid. They should be metal castable might have to do a little bit of filling around the side of the tongue here just to kind of make it a little bit more thing but i've angled the teeth back there's no not any kind of real major indent so i think we're okay um so yeah the plan is to get these guys uh geared up then so we'll add some we'll add some like helmets and things add some headgear to them um and make a nice little array of rat rat men that are going to uh, kind of adorn a table. So the first one I'll do is just general warriors. So these are going to be kind of very sparsely armoured. Um, maybe a little bit of chain mail, a little bit of plate, a bit of scale mail kind of stuff. Um, I say if there's anything you want me to do, then just shout out and keep thing in the chats, and I can add it in. Um, We'll do some rope belts. Uh, yeah, the plan is to basically get these guys posed as much as possible. Do you know, I'm not even going to do anything else on them. Them trousers are okay as they are. They're, uh, 
They're going to need more work after posing. Let's hide the trousers now. We'll come back and we'll do a loincloth. And again, I'm going to do a rope belt, so this is just going to be a loincloth for now. Do a long one first, then I'll trim it off and we'll do a shorter one. Rich, are you a uh, are you a, a Ratman fan? <laughs> they were the first army I ever collected back in the nineties. Uh, these were I loved them, man. And for Mordheim and for Blood Bowl. They were, the, uh, they were my go-to's. Right, now again, I was just about to do what I would do for metal sculpt uh, for, for casting here, I can't. I need to remember I'm doing metal. So these loincloths are going to have to come back and be a fair bit more solid than I would typically do. You can add to them now. Make them a thing. Again, this is just a base model here. We're going to uh, mix it up and do some more stuff. Ah, skeletons and elves. Good choices. Vampire cats was my one. I had the uh, the good old rat men. We had a vampire cats army. Had a Chaos Warriors army, a Chaos Beastman army, I love that one. Hey, hey, how you doing, we got? We had um, <clears throat> Chaos Warriors, Chaos Beastmen, uh, the Ratmen, and uh, Vampire Counts. Had a Bretonian army at one point as well. Oh, Dogs of War, that was one of my favourites. They were so characterful, they were. Cheers, yeah. And congrats on the awesome print, by the way, as well. That's looking the nuts, that is. I can't take any credit for really, can I? It just showed you how to do sports and stuff on it, but the, um, the sculpt on it is ace. The prints come out lovely. And I'm very much looking forward to seeing it as a finished product. 
<laughs> well, I'm going to start doing some more tutorials, I think, for the YouTube channel. Um, and also for the Patreon, because obviously the, I've geared up the Patreon now more around sculpting than, um, than miniatures. So, um, I want to try and get uh, a little bit more kind of short tutorials. So if there's anything you want to see, um, you want me to, to do and focus on. I'm going to do some about the sculpting techniques, some about supports. But we're going to do some about um, kind of just miniatures as a commercial endeavour as well, I think. I think like selling them and making money on them and, you know, doing them as digital assets versus physical assets and, you know, weighing up the pros and cons. I think I'm going to try and focus on a, a few different areas. Um... Right, so we've got a long loin cloth. Let's duplicate that and make a short one. Be honest. At the moment, my 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 last heating bill came in. At, um, well, for this next month, uh, my heating bill was like four hundred and twenty quid. Um, <clears throat> and I think a lot of that is keeping the office temperatures maintained while I'm while I've been printing. So uh, yeah, I'd love a GK two about now. To be honest. Short line cloth there. Um, what else are we going to add? Let's do let's do a leg bandage. That one is symmetrical. Let's just do one on that side. Yeah, I've got some. I've got some prints I need to be running now. But I've had the. Um, it's my wife's fortieth birthday on uh, Saturday, so we've had a little bit of uh, family time, a bit of downtime. I promised I wouldn't work over the weekend. So, um, I've had the heater off in the office over the weekend, and uh, it's been bitterly cold. So it's probably not a bad thing that it's been off because obviously they've been uh, running up quite a lot. But this morning coming back in, I've come into a lot of cold office. So I've got, let's say, when you're adding detail now, does it matter what it looks like? No, no, God. The the early stages of, uh, of adding the detail in Grimsy, um, they're going to look pretty rubbish. Um, so what I'm trying to do here, for example, this bandage, all I've done is I've made like a little tube that is the, an extraction of the leg. Um, and I'm just going around just trying to get the the crease is in roughly where I want it to be but if you look the bandage is starting here it's going around the outside of the leg here and then you're going to see it goes up and round it goes back over the starting points back round to here and then tucks back in at the top which means that somewhere in this area here this piece and this piece here need to connect um, so there should be a kind of a thing so what I should really be doing here actually is bring that over there bring that up to there let's carve this little top bit out so it's just thinking about form and stuff at the moment I'm not really worried about kind of like getting really fine in with the details and again for miniatures um, you don't want too much detail I see so many models that are just obscenely detailed and it's like it's like yeah it's a nice render um, but 
it's not a miniature like you can't paint it one of the things I always love is like I get a lot of compliments on my uh, models from people who kind of go uh, I love that I could just paint it do you know what I mean like they, they just they just appreciate the fact that the models are made to be painted because there's so many out there at the moment that just aren't that there's no consideration for the painter when you're making it so you've got to think about when you've got a little paintbrush can you get that paintbrush into all those little nooks and crannies and if you can't then that nook and cranny shouldn't be there you need to fill it in and kind of like make it um, make it work let's just do a little we'll just do a little kind of knot effect I'm not too fussed about this being um, realistic if that makes sense I just want it to actually visibly be a knot Auto group that. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to rotate it a touch because I'd rather have that. I'd rather have that little bit I've just done on the side of the leg than on the back. So I'm just going to rotate it around, and make it fit basically now. the back in here. Now things like this, these little the little tassels that are going to end up on here, I say tassels, the, uh, the, the tie ends of the thing, these bits are going to be quite useful for kind of filling those holes and, and little gaps. Um, so I see there the back of the knee. I don't want, I can't have a little gap like that on a model. Um, because the model's got to be castable, it can't have loads of like little nooks and crannies. Um, so if I just, if I use something like this as a little bit of detail, just sharpen up the edges with a bit of orb cracks. There you go, so I've got one little strand there. If I just duplicate that over, pop it there, we can shrink it down a touch if I need to. There you go, let's rotate and change the profile a touch. Make sure it extrudes back into the leg. Again, we can't have undercuts on a model, so we've got to be careful of them. There we go, so that now, it's addressed a little issue in the back of the knee there. I did until I did that. I mean, obviously, the, the legs are going to be posed, there'll be fur added, there'll be other textures and stuff like that, so that's not all we're going to get. Um, but from a distance, all you want is like if I zoom out to that level, so it looks about the same kind of size that it's going to be on the table, is can I read that detail? I'll just turn it off again. If I just do preview mode, get some shadows on there, can I see what I'm looking at? And yeah. I can see that it's bandage wraps and stuff like that, and that's that's the way to look at it. Is you don't want to you don't want to be looking at it up close. If it's massive on the screen, it's a cheat because it's not going to be that big on the table. It's going to be like, I mean, how big is this guy? Let's just get the ruler up on the screen, and I'll show you how big it's actually going to be. So, twenty-four mil to the shoulder. Uh, actually, sorry. 24 mil to the, the hump of his back, so he's not a very big model. You don't want you don't want little fine details that are going to be difficult to see. Realistically speaking, you're not going to see details that are smaller than about a millimeter. 
So a millimeter on this is basically the gap on this ruler from the bottom of the bottom of a line to the bottom of the next line. So that is one millimeter. Okay. So one millimeter is from that point there to the bottom of that point. So when you're sculpting things, if it is smaller than that distance, that means you're less than a millimeter, which is really really bad for your details um, you're just going to end up losing them if they're that small they're, they're just going to not fizzle into non-existence once you start painting so don't get into like real micro textures and stuff like that it's not necessary unless you're making something that's going to be like you know 12 inches tall or something like that in which case you do want smaller details because they're bigger but you still want to remember that kind of one millimeter minimum don't go too small so that they become microscopic detail <clears throat> I really want to pull up a load of models that are just I don't think are fit for purpose but then that's like shaming other companies isn't it and it's not good I need to kind of I need to make one myself that is uh, a bad model to demonstrate it really Um, right then. So we've got Allegra. Uh, yeah, if you go get, go onto the Discord server, into the uh, February twenty twenty four challenge at the bottom here, uh, and there is a file. Oh, if you want to watch the video, by the way, of the sculpts going on, it's here. I've linked it into this bit. So you can watch this sculpt happening. This little happy bee. Or timid bee, rather. Um, but at the top where I've done all the prompts and stuff, I've included here. Um, under challenge rules. So we're working with 32mm scale for this uh, as a kind of an exercise. Um, my human... A male uh, base mesh on a 25 millimeter diameter base with the rule mark at uh, rule mark with the ruler as a benchmark uh, is available there it's the download links there so you can just grab that as a freebie <clears throat> do you know what yeah I mean you can this is this I mean this is a, this is a February challenge um, the actual sculpts took me like two hours but obviously you know I've kind of got quicker over the couple of years anyway so it's um it probably would have taken me a lot longer if I'd have done that a few years back but these these two little dudes this is Beatrice the shroom bee or the bee shroom bumble shroom that's what we went for um this model took me like two hours <clears throat> um so the, the whole the whole stream was about three hours there was about half an hour of um, half an hour of spent uh, like gathering image resources to work on then there was two hours of actual sculpting time and then the final half hour was like posing and just um, just finishing up and getting them print ready so I was quite I was quite impressed I was quite pleased with the uh, the end results I literally I went into this with no clue what I was doing um, I knew what the prompts were but I had no idea what I was going to end up sculpting so I was just working through it on the fly but if you want to, if you've got two hours to, to, to kill or three hours to kill, you can watch that video and um, you'll, you'll see the whole thing and all the thought processes that went into it and whatever. Um, but this challenge isn't, it's not going to go away. I'm going to leave it up. It'll be still around. So if you want to, yeah, but you know what? This one, there's no weapons and armor and stuff and that, that kind of helps to keep the time down a little bit. Um, but yeah, the... Uh, what do you call it? This challenge will stick around if you fancy tackling it at any point. Just go and jump in. Um, the next challenge we'll do uh, what we're on the 26th now. Thursday. Thursday, I'll probably post the, the prompts for next month's challenge. Uh, and then you've got the whole month to run at it then. But if you ever want to just jump on and tackle this one, then you just, just pick it up anytime you want. It's not going to go away if you just want to kind of get in and have a go at the prompts see what you come up with then uh, feel free but yeah I want to try and do a new one every month um, 
try and get a bit more, a few more people involved. So so far, I think we've got we've got James, we've got uh, Dan, we've got myself and Adam. Um, have have done this sculpt. So there's a few of us have kind of attempted it this month. And there's no, the idea is there's no pressure on it, do you know what I mean? It's just, um, it's it's to kind of get your brain ticking outside of your comfort zone. So, like, I, I, I wouldn't typically sculpt like a bee mushroom, that's not my thing. I don't really do kind of creatures, I do, like, humanoids and things. So to do a creature was something a little bit kind of unusual for me. I needed, the re I needed to use the references, and that was the point of it. So, you know, grab your reference material... Have a look at it and try and think how you creatively you can use the different bits. Yeah, that's it, and it's it is literally a case of um, you know finish not perfect, get get it get it across the line, and then learn from it and do your next one. In fact, to give you all a little bit of free advice that I've, um, I'll, I'll give out to anybody who's doing my kind of like my, my training and stuff like that as well. So let's say for example you want to learn how to sculpt models like Games Workshop. Um, you know they're a company with a pedigree, you know they're good sculptors, you know the models are actual proper models that are good to paint and everything else right. So you know they tick all the boxes. They have got an art director, um, an art department, who are, um, let's say the art director is going to look at every single sculpt that comes through and they're going to go, yes, that's perfect, or take it away and do it again, it's not good enough. <clears throat> right? They're not going to submit and put out anything that's rubbish right. Now... People like myself um, and any other company that do STL files where you're doing like monthly releases, you are your own vetter, you're your own art director, which means that my discretion is the only thing that stops the model going out or not. Um, but equally, if I'm under the pressure to release 15 models a month, then certain things are going to get released that shouldn't. Do you know what I mean? And I've, I've stopped doing the monthly releases now because of this kind of thing. Things will get pushed out to public that should never have, should never see the light of day because they're not good enough. Um, <clears throat> and it's the danger of having to do things on a tight deadline and having to crank out stuff constantly over and over and over again. So the um, like the new the new releases have to be turned around so fast that the quality slips. And we don't want the quality to slip, so that's um, that's why I say don't use companies who produce STL files as your reference material for this exercise. Pick a company like Corvus Belly, uh, like maybe Reaper, um, Games Workshop, somebody who has been around for a while. What are the guys called who do the 40mm uh, game? Um, Oh, I forget the name now. Cypriot Company, I think. Um, I think it's called Conquest the Game. Is I can't remember what the... Hey, oh, look how you doing. Yeah, fire it in. Pop it into the uh, Discord. Uh, let's do the exclamation mark Discord thing and I'll um, happily have a little look for you. There you go. Like, join, sign up there. Post a link into the, uh, into the Discord, into the um, self-promotion cha channel. And I'll go and have a little gander in a minute. Um, so yeah, so go grab a model, but buy the model. Don't buy it. Don't don't look at it digitally. Don't look at photographs or anything else. You, you need the physical miniature in your hand, right? So grab the model you want to make, um, and I want you to copy it literally as closely as you possibly can. Every little bit of detail that you can see on that model, you need to try and sculpt it into the physical figure. And then what will happen is, by the time you get to the very end of that process. <laughs> well, I, yeah, yeah the, the whole reason for, for excluding AI is it's trying to get your brain working. And if the AI is doing the thinking for you and the creativity, then that, that cheats you out of the part of the uh, part of the thing. But, you know, if you, if, you, if you feel you need to, it's fine. But it's, it's just the intention is like there's so much reliance on people using AI these days. My concern is, and I put up a post about this, and it kind of is been a bit of buzzing on um, on Facebook my concern is that people lose the ability to do things so we lose the ability to be creative we lose the ability to write stories to write articles and whatever else because 
it's too easy to go to chat GPT and say write me an article about this or write me a story about X, Y and Z and then just take the AI thing and just publish it because you know who's got time to, to write anything when AI can do it for you straight away you know why, why would you want to try and draw something and create something when you can just ask ask mid journey to do it for you and I understand it's a tool and whatever but I think when the moment we start to rely on those things that's when your creativity dips um, so this is an exercise in creativity so the, the actual the actual end product doesn't really matter that much it's the process that you're going through and what what I want to see ideally is that every month these ideas start flowing that little bit more and we start kind of picking up and learning from what other people have done so like again if we look at the, the, the way the prompts have been interpreted here so like Dan Starling chose to do this like kick-ass uh, chick with a big hammer with a mushroom head um, there's like little beehive bits in the uh, in the kind of the, the, the kind of the wings here uh, she's got like a little fur collar which obviously is a little hint to the bee the goggles are again a little bee uh, hat tip we've got what I believe to be a paintbrush style uh, ponytail um, with a little bee stinger on the end so there's certain things we see where the prompts have come in but the, the the base model is used as a human so in this case obviously you can see where the prompts have been interpreted and how he's decided to use them he's come up with something quite creative um, mine actually I think is less creative um, Adam's done something quite similar to me where he's literally just taken a mushroom and a bee and he's mashed the two together uh, and that's a more literal interpretation and that's fine but then obviously what will happen is the next time we do a challenge um, you've seen what I've, I've produced for the previous one we've seen what uh, James has done here uh, we can see what uh, Adam's done what uh, Daniel's done and you can see how the interpretations are different and they're, they're vastly different as well you know what I mean they're not just a little bit different they are really different and you don't have to use all the prompts either um, just whatever whatever it takes to get something creative out of you basically just use what you feel you need but yeah take that model you've bought anyway go to workshop model uh, Lord of the Rings miniature Corvus Belly um, the Greek Cypriot guys uh, Mantic if you if you like that kind of thing whatever 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 it is you want but look, a company that's got pedigree that you know are vetting the models take that model uh, sculpt it as closely as you can once the model's finished you print that model off and you compare it side by side to the original that you were copying and then you've got to take a note of every single thing that you've done wrong all the things you've got right j jot them down as well so you've got a little positives list as well but all of the negatives you want to kind of go through and go this isn't right this isn't right this isn't right when you finish this sculpt and you've done the analysis you're not going to go back to that and change it you're going to leave it where it is it's done pick another model go get yourself another one do the exercise again but this time all those things that you learned from the first one all those mistakes you made keep them in your head as you're sculpting and you'll learn a lot through the process of copying and replicating the model that's in front of you and then all those little learning points you've just got in your head that you've written down from your anal analysis, they go into your next sculpt and hopefully you don't make the same mistakes. And then you print that off and you do the comparison. And then after you've done that bit, we lather, rinse, repeat. And you do it three or four or five times or whatever, right? And then what you're doing is subconsciously you're learning the style of the sculpts that you, you're copying. So the stylistic aspects of it are gonna kind of start becoming part of your muscle memory. So when you go to sculpt the next model, you're going to already be sculpting in that style because when you come to do your original stuff, you've done so many of these models in this style already that you're going to be sculpting that instinctively. Um, but also you're going to be learning about the considerations that you need when you're making miniatures, about the exaggeration on details, how big things like teeth need to be, how big rivet should be um, muscle structure and all that kind of stuff and how if it's too realistic it's going to be it's going to not print well so all of those exaggerations that you need to account for in the stylization and the kind of the scale they're all going to come into play um, and you'll you'll be learning that whether you want it or not 
Cheers, Oleg. Let's have a little gander up for you. Oh, I'm liking what I've seen here, Oleg. Very nice. See, I'm liking here, it looks like you've drawn all the scales in. Which I appreciate, that's uh, that's really smart. It takes a lot of time and patience to do it this way around. A lot of people just jump to um, using insert meshes. Um, and then what ends up happening is all of your scales end up saming. Uh, and what you've done here is you've got the you've got the back scales in here, you've got the other ones that are running down on the inside of the throat, and then obviously it looks like these are probably your primary scales, and then you've got some secondary ones running in, um, which obviously you infill the gaps with and kind of you know you bridge the spaces. Um, but now I like that. I appreciate what you've done here, and it's all hand sculpted. You can see it, which is nice. Oh, there you go, there's your concept as well. Nice concept too. Are you doing the concept yourself, Oleg, or somebody else doing it for you? Oh, I like this. Little baby griffin. <clears throat> this is nice. The, my, my one little thing I've spotted immediately on this one, which jumps out as jarring to me, is the symmetry you've left on the... Um, on the, the chest feathers. Um, something that's looking straight on you there, I would, I'd have turned symmetry off and just go back over that and just give that a, an asymmetrical pass. Um, just to kind of break up that centre line a little bit, I think. But the design's nice, the sculpting's nice. A nice concept too. I think maybe the chest needs to be puffed out more looking at the concept though. Yeah, prob I'll probably inflate the chest a little bit more at the top, make it more of a heart shape. Then kind of a, it's, m it's more circular at the moment. I think I'd, I'd make it like a heart shape and kind of bring it out a bit more. But nice, nice stylization, nice uh, sculpting technique. This one's cool. <clears throat> you might have a few problems if you're 3D printing this one. Um, these little bits here on the hips, you, they need to be really extruded back into the body of the model. Um, the gaps underneath the shoulder pads, again, I would extrude the shoulder pads down into there. I'm assuming it's like a 32mm scale. If I'm wrong, I apologise. If this is like a larger piece that you're going to use as a kit, then you're probably fine. But... Um, like these little these little gaps here, these are going to cause you problems with printing. So your best bet is to get them filled in. Um, but the concept's nice, the sculpt's nice. There's a bit more. Uh, the the sketch feels more dynamic than the actual finished piece for some reason. Which is a shame, but um, I think you've got a bit more. There's a bit of an exaggerated twist in the sketch. If you look at the positioning of the shoulders and the uh, the torso thing, I think we've got a little twist there, a little bit of a, a little bit of a twist going on, which is nice. The po the leg pose seems a bit more extreme as well, like she's leaning forwards a bit I think. There's a little bit of a disjoint basically from the from the sketch to the, uh, the the pose of this one. It's making the pose of this one feel wooden in comparison. It's not bad it's not bad by any means. But there's just there is just something missing. Um, and then obviously if you're doing for 3D printing you want to make sure whatever scale this is at, these loincloth bits, these little skirt bits 
You want to make sure that the thickness of the cloth is at least like a millimetre. Um, hey, Ray, how are you doing? So one one millimetre needs to be your minimum thickness. Ideally, not like one point two millimetres. And that will make sure that it prints all right. That it hasn't got any like transparencies in it. That any like little thin bits that break through, um, and nothing that's going to kind of like um, snap off too easily. Oh, just uh, Oleg's just sent me some um, an art station link to go and have a look at some awesome uh, awesome designs. That one I love. This is just nice, man. Yeah, I mean. The one thing I haven't got at the moment is time, but this one, I would love to print that and paint that. That's just badass. Yeah, Oleg, that that one that one's epic. That one is. You need to get you need to get that one on a Kickstarter project and sell it. That whole that whole scene with the skull in the background and everything else, get that on a Kickstarter and get it sold because people will eat that up. I mean, if you if you put that on Kickstarter and, and you you advertise it on Facebook, if you put that on Kickstarter, you don't do at least like three three grand. You don't do three thousand dollars on a Kickstarter on that. I would be incredibly surprised. I mean, with the epic with the epic concept as well, man. I'll, I'll take my hat off there. That is a that is a brilliant sculpt. Hey, little mushroom dude. <laughs> We've just been talking mushrooms because I've put a challenge up that includes mushrooms this month. I love that one though. I love like the big mole claw. Got like a lot of different little earthy elements creeping in. Design wise, really nice. So it's a cyber. <laughs> it's a space turtle. Love it. No, I, th I think you've done this one for a render. The sculpt's lovely. As a miniature, it's not going to work. There's too much. There's too many layers and stuff where you can actually get under the armor plates and stuff. You need to solidify everything for that. But that's that is cool, man. Nice. Yeah, nice. Another nice character sculpt. Again, I think you've got some overlapping layers that probably need. A little bit of adjustment, but that'd make a nice, like, larger scale kit. Oh, he's cool. Loving him as well. Another one you definitely need to be selling and uh, putting out if you haven't already. And then we're back to your dragon bust. Really nice. I'd love to see that as a full dragon. Actually, that'd be a, that'd be a good one to have as a, a full dragon. Uh, yeah, yeah. Can you earn that much for a Kickstarter? Yeah, you can. Um, yeah, totally. If you advertise it well um, and you do the things, I mean, my my barbarian Kickstarter. Uh, let me pull some numbers for you, and I'll tell you. My last one didn't do as well, um, but I didn't do any advertising or anything on it, so it was. Um, It was a bit disappointing. The uh, let me pull it up and I'll show you the things. So the privet the privateer didn't do great. Um, but if I look at the the warlock, so here we go. Warlock, uh, one model. Just her on a chaise lounge with the uh, the table, the rat. So there's a little bit of a little bit of a diorama with it. Just you know, not dissimilar to what we've just seen. Um, unlocks. What did we unlock on this one? Did the nudie version of uh, we unlocked the bringer of biscuits, uh, the carnivorous plant, um, a living broom. There we go. Um, but that one was that one did four, four grandish. Yeah, four thousand two hundred on that one. And then uh, the the barbarian before that, three thousand five hundred fifty-two. 
The Privateer, I say it was a fail, it didn't do as well. Um, 2,217. But then I also did, uh, I did some sales on my Mini Factory on that one as well, so there was extra extra money coming in from my Mini Factory for that one. Um, so, <clears throat> I mean, that one was my best one, 25 grand on the Kingdom of Talarius, but that was, that was like a year's worth of work. Hard, hard work that was. Um, ah, right. Ah, fair enough. That's a shame. I say the the big the big demon guy. If you've got if you got something like that, you can produce. I mean, especially if you can do it as a female. Um, <clears throat> if you did like a female version of it or whatever, with a nice concept and some good artwork. But you'll see, the ones that have done well have had. Some like decent presentation going on as well. So I've coloured the renders. We've done a nice for this one. We did a nice little, uh, a nice title. We did um, the renders. I had some of the models professionally painted. No, no, twenty five grand. Twenty five grand's an army. Like you see the army here. Look, so it's all of that. So we've got uh, Chocobo Riders here. Uh, ninety one, yeah, ninety one models. I think it was it was ninety one models at start. So it started at 91 models. I think it finished like 250 or something like that. There was a lot of models by the end of it. So each one of these units was uh, 10 models. So we had the Rifleman, the Crossbowman, the uh, Gunners. Then we had the Kingsguard, Glaiveguard. There was 12 models in that unit. Kingsguard, Sword, Great Sword, which was 12 models. The Kingsguard, um, Shield Guard, which was 12 models. Hey, Rafa, how are you doing? Uh, then we have the the Rockabo Knights, um, the Outriders, and the Heavy Cavalry. Um, that was five models apiece. The Ogres was five models. The Archers was t eleven models, I think, for some reason. I don't know why I did eleven on them. Then we had the uh, Halberdiers and the Swordsmen. There were ten models apiece on them. The Dragoons, which was ten models. The Monks, which was five. Uh, and then we had a whole range of like hero characters in there, plus Ifrit. Um, there you go, you see them all there. So the the basic army had twelve had had ninety ninety models in it at the beginning, and then by the end, let's say two hundred and fifty odd. <laughs> well. Yeah, back back then I was doing it. Um, I was doing it like part time whilst I was doing the Patreon stuff, but I was still doing Patreon full time. It's just taking me a long time to sculpt stuff. Um, but yeah, the army the army's army sell man. It's, you've just got to make an awful lot of them. Man. You've got to make loads and loads and loads of these guys. Um, but again, th with the rat guy I'm doing on on stream today, when I actually do some sculpting, so chatting, <laughs> it's. Uh, what do you call it? So we got like the rat here now. It's like you see what I've done is I've got the base mesh. I've made a few assets. We've done some trousers. I've done the wraps. We've got a few bits like that. I'll do a few. I've got all the head variants, but I'm going to add like helmets on them. So we'll do them per per one if you like. Um, and what we need to do is I'm going to uh, merge visible. I'm going to go to our visible merged one. I'm going to uh, isolate the the rat components. And what I want here is the body, really, more than anything else. Thank you, Oleg. Yeah, there's some good money to be made in, in a Kickstarter, but you've got to you've got to make sure that you do proper presentation. Don't don't skimp on it. Render it up nice. Get the colour in, just like you did on that on that Red Demon guy. That level of finish on a model is perfect. Hey, Adam, how you doing, mate? And John and Stephen. Oh, missed a few of you. Sorry, guys. A couple of you guys on Facebook popping up and saying hello while I've been there. Uh, chin wagging. Yeah, it's a nice way of um, nice way of work. It, it, I mean, I, I do tend to work like that because it's um, it's a little bit easier for me. It's quicker. 
Oh, so now I've got this rat dude. Um, I'm not going to worry about the hands too much because the hands are going to get posed for weapons and shields and stuff like that. So what I'll probably end up doing is I'll take one of those hands, pose it into a, a fist. I'll take another one and pose it into a shield grip. Um, and then, or a, a sword grip, sorry, and then that will probably be it. The, the, there's likely to not be another pose for the hands for most of the models. Um, so I'll take this. Let's auto group it. Let's forget the upper body for now. Let's do lower, vo lower body variety. Duplicate this a few times and hide most of them. Now I don't want to be too dynamic with the pose because remember I'm doing um, like a unit. They've got to rank up. It's more important than like dynamic poses. Now I'm going to use them for some like assassins and stuff like that, and some more skirmish type uh, units. So we will see some more dynamic posing coming, just not on this particular dude. My main aim here is to try and get the feet to line up. Uh, so right hand is the sword arm. Power Elephantos, how are you doing? Uh, right, let me uh, do the exclamation mark Discord thing for you. There you go. Sorry, guys. I, I've uh, Adam. Sorry, mate. I've uh, I've had multi. I've been on Twitch chat rather than multi stream chat, so I've missed your comments here, dude. Um, out of curiosity, why return? Why the return to square base tracks? Well, there's a certain. A certain fantasy game has just come out and determined that uh, everything that was 20 on 20 millimeter bases before needs to be based onto 25 mil. Um, so I'm just uh, catering to the masses, basically, to try and get a bit more uh, a bit more of an audience for my sales. This was one of my first armies I ever collected when I uh, when I first started playing Warhammer. Um, what I'm doing is I'm trying to do these in metal as well. So these models are going to be made, produced potentially by uh, foot saw miniatures in metal forming. Hey Grims, yeah I'm on. Hey Rosie, how are you doing? Oh, so we've got everybody in the chat now. Yeah, I'll do. Uh, I'll do Facebook. Um, Facebook, YouTube, and uh, Twitch all in one go. All the, little, all the little symbols popping up from all the different platforms now. I don't typically get many people on the um, on YouTube chatting. I get the odd one here and there. Facebook again. We occasionally get like one or two people who are um, like regulars to the stream, but most people on Facebook just drop a like and then kind of move on. Um, most of the chat tends to come from yeah well this is the thing it's the old hammer crowd i mean you, you think how many people are um 
old school and want the old metal models as well. And this was this was the thinking behind it basically. It's like I can offer I can offer what I want really, can't I? You know, people will people will either buy it or not. Um, but if we're offering it in resin and STL, and you've got the option to get it in metal, it kind of picks up a. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it won't be silver. It'll be uh, it'll be pewter. Sorry, there, yo. But yeah, the um, the option to have the the army in pewter, I think, is a nice little a nice little thing that will appear to, uh, appeal to like the old boys who just like the weight of a metal model in their hands. And obviously, if you want if you want best quality, you go for the uh, the resin option, like printed resin. So I know some people have got reservations about printed resin, but honestly, I can't go back to um, plastics and like cast resins now because you have to deal with mold lines. You have to deal with um, what do you call it feed lined vents, flash, all that kind of stuff. Just lowers the quality of the thing. Just, you know what I mean? The, the overall quality ends up dropping because you forget to clean up the mold lines, and then the mod, you know, you see it in the end product. So I think the the best quality ones you're going to get are going to be the uh, going to be the cast piece, uh, the the three D printed pieces. I hate posing hands. <laughs> a slice of cheese on the blade. You know what? I'm going to go and have a little look at some cheese knives. Because I know I've had sets of cheese knives before. And they're very particular shaped blades, aren't they? And I think I need to have like rats with all the different cheese knives. Now that you said that. I feel like it needs to be a thing, you know what I mean? Like they call the assassins death masters, and I think they need to be cheese masters. Just as a little uh, observation here, guys. I think I've stuffed up the um, the sword I'm using here, by the way. I appear to have moved it at some point with symmetry turned on, and we've got an overlapping seam all the way through the middle of the, the middle of the blade. So if I can't recover that from the original file, I might have to scrap that one and redo it, but hopefully not. So this is where <clears throat> the pommel, the skull crusher. Yeah, no worries, mate. No worries. You cracking on with some work, are you? <laughs> I was looking up at all the cheese comments in the thing. I can't even keep tabs on it. So you want a cheese pommel? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, cheese, a cheese wedge is a pommel, a baby bell. I'll just leave it as it is, but just put a little peelable seam around it, yeah? Now again here, we need to be careful that these 
these clawed hands wrap around the blade properly because all these little um, fingertips with the nails on are going to be a big no-no. Yeah, basically what I'll be doing is by the time I'm done here, I'm gonna. I'll uh, the last thing I'll do on the hand will be I'll run an inflation pass, um, where I basically I'll just fill in all the gaps between the fingers and the uh, the handle. Um, basically, this hand for metal casting is gonna to have to be solid. Um, I mean, for 3D printing, it needs to be fairly solid anyway, because you don't want all like little resin traps in the middle of the fingers. But this is going to have to be like properly solid. Like I'm going to have to sculpt it in uh, and make it as a single solid piece. <clears throat> now I don't know if you know yeah, but the um, the metal casting for these ones won't be done in the same way as your jewelry stuff. So it uses a uh, centrifugal casting rather than lost wax. So there'll be no, um, there'll be no kind of like melting out the, uh, the, the wax model kind of thing on this one. Um, it's all casting rubber, but that means you can't get away with any undercuts. Um, yeah. No, same one. In fact, my microphone's closer to the uh, closer to the thing now, so it should be all right. Let's scratch it. How can you speed it? Right, so this is. You need to watch the previous video, Oleg. If you go to my um. Good morning, Phil. How are you doing, mate? If you go onto my uh, onto Discord, right? Go onto the uh, the February 24th chat character challenge and watch the uh, this video here, the YouTube video just above these little B models, um, and you'll see, like I say, that I, I created the base sculpt for this one, the one on the right. This is the the unposed version. This is the posed version. I created the unposed version here in two hours. Uh, without having any concept to follow, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just literally making it up on the fly. So, uh, or on the B, if you prefer. But did you, shh. sorry about that. That was freaking awful. <laughs> but yeah, so the um, you can see the whole sculpt take place in a two-hour window. And I'm going to do a speed lapse, uh, a time lapse, speed up version of it as well, with a bit of a talk over. Um, but basically, I sculpt everything in one tool as often as I possibly can and I work quite uh, sketchy and then go back and refine later on so don't the main thing is don't get too hung up on any of your work because you need to get to a point where yeah yeah oh yeah totally yeah the kids appreciate the jokes actually so. <laughs> but yeah the um, the issue with the uh, with, with sculpting is that you can you can spend so long on something and then go it's not working but if you spend if you spent four hours on something and you know it's not working it's going to be really hard for you to throw it away because you've spent four hours you've invested time in it 
But if you can do that same amount of kind of like, you can get to that same realization in like 10 minutes. It's far easier to throw away 10 minutes of work than four hours worth of work. And that'll allow you to kind of be more, be more fluid with the design and get things done. Um, it's like if you if you know that you can redo it in a couple of minutes. So like the other thing I'd say as well is don't um, don't rely on like the undo features and things. I, I turn off undo history. I don't use undo as often as I, um, unless I absolutely. Sometimes I do it if I've like faff something up on a pose or whatever it is. But for the most part, I'm always prepared to redo um, a bit of work. And you kind of need to with ZBrush, don't you? Because you know, it, like sometimes just can, in fact, let's just save it. Just because I'm going to attempt fight here, it sometimes just randomly crashes and kicks you out. So, uh, <clears throat> so yeah, just literally uh, split that off. Yeah, it's not right. I was working on. And there is. There you go. I've undone my, undone my dodgy seam. So I could have hunted around for the original version of this file and kind of undone that. For what it's worth, I know it's going to take me a few seconds to rework it. And yet, if I go back and try and find the original, it's probably going to take me longer to get it, bring it in, position it, and everything else. Far better off just just redo it for what it's worth, isn't it? Yeah, just throw, just don't be don't be afraid of redoing the work because it's it's not difficult. The, the works the works are easy. The works the easy part. Disposing of it is the hard part. That's the that's the bit, that's the bit that's going to make you a uh, freak out. I'm just going to merge this hand together now. Um, I'll come back into here now. Let's just do some detailing because I'm going to use this hand over and over and over again now. This is my this is my weapon grip. <clears throat> What's that? You had a cool quote from Bruce Lee first. I fear not the man who has practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who has practiced one kick 10,000 times. Pretty much, yeah, that's it. You, you know, lava, rinse, repeat, and you're going to get really good at it. It's like I was saying earlier about copying a model and then um, repeat the process, do your critical analysis, apply your learning, and carry it forward. That rinse, repeat kind of... Um, Learning method is going to, uh, no matter what your learning style, that's why you're going to get it. Hey Flickr, how are you doing? Uh, I started using ZBrush back in 2010, but I was sculpting models, uh, I've been sculpting miniatures for like 20 years. Um, but I started using like green stuff and um, milliput and things like that. So like epoxy clays and epoxy putties and things. Um, so all of these techniques I learned <clears throat> in um, in physical mediums is what I've kind of brought with me to digital. So my my, my digital sculpting kind of echoes the uh, the traditional media. <clears throat> Would I keep doing the same model over and over? No, 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 no. Uh, different models every time, but just take your learning onto it. So things you things that work well, you do again. Things that don't work, you have to remember not to do them. Um, the one thing I would say though is when you're sculpting, um, I know, and I, I've said this loads of times on stream. I know loads of ways of doing a sculpt, like doing like different things. Um, I experimented with chainmail for quite a while to try and find the best way of doing chainmail, <clears throat> and there's different ways that use different techniques, um, and. 
ultimately the one I've the one I settled on um, is the one that gives me the best printed result. Thanks very much, Flicker. Yeah, the it's all about it's all about how this prints. It's not about the, uh, the how it looks on screen is irrelevant, really. Um, a lot of people will sculpt a model on screen, probably never transfer it into a physical um, product, and you're missing a load of the uh, learning points then because if you, my uh, my usual kind of like go-to kind of like example is like a chef who doesn't taste his food. So. Uh, if you're preparing food for people and you need to taste it to make sure that you've got, you know, it tastes nice, that it's uh, it's fit for consumption and all this kind of stuff, right? Uh, but also that it's as you intended. And the intent with the miniature is that it's going to be painted and played with. Now, if you only do the sculpting and that's where you stop, you're missing a chunk. So people then take that model that you've made and they 3D print it. Some people will support it themselves. Some people will... <clears throat> expect you to do it for them um, and they'll use the ones you provide them and then other people will just kind of um, buy the prints off other people they'll buy they'll buy them as a as a finished product now what all these people have got in common is that they're all using the model then beyond where you're using it so you need to kind of like experience what they're experiencing and then you can appreciate you know the frustrations that they're going to have if you've got things wrong and you'll see it easily you know you start doing supports on your own models you'll realize you've stuffed up the support in somewhere or you've made a mistake in the sculpt and it's quite easy to go back and fix it in most cases you just have to go and use a bit of inflation brush and not fill stuff in and whatever um, And there's one of my little regular things you'll see me doing. I use uh, Dynamesh with H uh, Dynamesh with Polish turned on, and that will kind of do a little bit of stylization for you. So if you're struggling to stylize something, sculpt a little bit, and then uh, lower the resolution just enough that you don't lose too much detail, and then do your Dynamesh with Polish on. Um, now here I've lost all of that that I did, so I've got to come back in and add this in now. It's not the end of the world, though. <laughs> uh, so I I use the 2022 uh, 2022.0.8 which was the very very last one they released in the 2022 edition so after that they went on to a subscription model um, so I've got the, the very very last edition that is on a lifetime license so I won't be upgrading past here but this literally does everything I'm ever going to need to do um, I'll never need to sculpt a model that will need features I don't already have in ZBrush. And the only thing Zeb Maxon could do to improve ZBrush for me here now would be to make it a little bit more stable so it doesn't just crash out randomly on me. Right then, so... Before that, I watched how you create a female character and you use your method for creating hair braids when you were. Oh, brilliant! Thanks, Oluk. <laughs> Which one was that then? Female character with the braids. Um, that would be Eleanor, I think. The elf mage, elf warlock, sorry, warlock, sorceress. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, uh, Grimsy. Zebrush. Yeah, they're on the they're on um, twenty twenty four, which is the uh, what do you call it now? The subscription model. <laughs> I 
Or after just reading your dad jokes there. <laughs> the Quackheads one was good. Okay, so again, with this, what I need to do, I need to make sure this model is contained within the boundaries of this, this base. So what's going to happen is all of these models are going to end up uh, ranking up, right? So we're going to have <clears throat> we're going to have ten of these wide potentially. There'll be ten bases in a line. Um, with ten bases in a line, every model is going to stand on the base, and they're going to fill the space in there. If they overhang into the next base, even the tower, yeah. Uh, if they overhang into the next base, then we're going to have issues. Now, what I would say is the the base here could end up being like this yeah so the tail then can can bend round into this space but we want to try and do it so they can be positioned fully into this area they don't have to be in the center of the base but they do need to be on it <clears throat> um, now it used to be that what you'd have is you'd have a diagonal slot in the base um, so you'd have a you'd have a, a, a tab, and this these are all going to need a tab by the way because they've been uh, cast in metal. They're all going to need to be uh, accounted for with the the tabs on, or we're going to have to put a little puddle on the bottom, um, little puddle bases so they can be kind of glued onto a base like solid. Okay, so let's just do a duplicate of that sword. Merge down. Let's mask it off. Oops. Now, like I said, they're not going to be particularly dynamic. They don't need to be dynamic. change the orientation of that sword because it's bothering me. <clears throat> yeah, if you look up in the top left corner right up here You'll always see there's a, uh, a little thing about it. Or you can click on help over here and I think there's... Uh, oh no, I'm online. It's just in the top left corner. <laughs> okay, then what I need to do, I need to take this hand. Which I'm just going to isolate from the body now. Split mask. Duplicate it, hide one, and then we want this to be uh, like a fist. So we'll highlight the whole thing, position the knuckle here, the gizmo, sorry, on the knuckle, and I'm just going to mask off that. We're going to go down to the next knuckle. That's that. And then do the same again. Okay. So we have this one. We start at the base, rotate it round.
<clears throat> okay, I stuffed up there, haven't I? Do you want the um, fingers to all kind of line up a bit? And I am going to fill the uh, gap in between the fingers there, so that's going to be uh, solid. Um, got a question regarding supported resin prints. How long would you recommend curing at 25mm? Um, so I use uh, a UV now curing lamp mostly. Um, and it runs on a 180 second cycle and what I tend to do is I'll put those uh, models in the Cura um, and they'll stay in there for like one cycle so 180 seconds um, and then after they've done one cycle in there I'll rotate them flip them all over and then put them in for another 180 seconds so that's um, so that three minutes Three minutes aside, so about six minutes in total curing. Give or take. I mean, I'll be honest. The only reason I use uh, I use an, a three-minute cycle is because it's easy for me because it's two rotation. It's, it's two like automated time cycles on my uh, on my lamp. Oh yeah. I mean, I imagine most of these things are, are fairly like you know. Fairly samey, aren't they? But I've never, I've never bought a wash and cure station. I use um, Tupperware tubs and uh, kind of primitive stuff. I've been using it since I did my um, since I got my first 3D printer back in 2015. I've always kind of done it the same way. Wash and cure stations weren't even a thing then. Um, <clears throat> so yes, yeah, so I've just. I've just always done it without them, and I've just never seen the need to go and buy one. It's more, it's more worktop space, isn't it? That I can't. I've got to try and find room for. <laughs> no, to be honest, I mean, I was chatting to the wife about it the other day because the uh, at the moment we're we've literally uh, like Crystal Collapse is ready to launch today. So like after I finish my stream today, I'm going to be sending out um, uh, newsletters to announce it, uh, the the launch. So we're going into pre-order with it. So um, we'll be starting to take pre-orders as of today, basically. Uh, right, let's save that. Let's. Polish it, let's bump the resolution up. Oh, no, that's not right. So, um, yeah, basically, we've, we've got, um, I've got a print room in my office, which has got enough, oh, cheers, man. I've got enough, um, I've got enough print room, uh, print capacity for maybe, maybe seven printers. 
So we worked it out with, with seven printers. We can produce something in the region of around about, uh, I think it's about a thousand pounds of stock a day. Like sale, sale price kind of thing. So, you know, we're, we're talking around about, you know, 30 grand of models being produced a month um, from the, the space we've got in my in my office here in the um, but obviously if we get to that kind of level then we're going to be having to look at getting a unit anyway yeah so with seven, with seven printers the amount of models we can get on the printer um, we're selling the models at like £10 each so we can do uh, what's that um Anywhere from, depending on the size of the model, we can get 20, I think 20, 19 is the smallest quantity I've got on the one printer. Um, and we've got up to 44 on one of the build plates for a, another model that doesn't take up so much space. So, um, selling them at £10 each, that's 44 models on one build plate gets us, uh, what's that, 440 quid? worth of uh, prints. In fact, do you know what? I've got my numbers right wrong here, haven't I? It's not a thousand pound of stock of dough. Uh, Saturn, Saturn 3 Ultra. And I've got a um, Epax X1 4K as well. Which is a fast printer. No, no, the, the, everything's clean. Never sell a model with supports on. Um, any single model you ever buy from my web store is literally it's shipped to you ready to paint. Hey Soul King, how you doing? Thanks for the uh, follow on uh, on Twitch. Um, yeah, every single model that you will buy off my website will be supplied to you, literally cleaned, cured, processed, and everything else. The only thing you'll need to do on it is paint it. You don't need uh, glue it to a base and paint it. That's, that's your lot. There's no. You won't have to take a scalpel to it, you won't have to take a knife to it, a file or anything like that. It's just paint the thing. Yeah, but like I said, I've got a four hundred pound I've got a four hundred and twenty pound heating bill because I've got to uh, I've got to keep the office warm uh, while I'm printing while we're running through uh, British winter. So uh, yeah. So yeah. So basically, like I say we, we print the models off. Um, so four, 44, 44 models on one build plate, nineteen models on another build plate. I can run those plates two or three times a day per printer. So with one printer, we can do. I mean, at worst case scenario, what we're we looking at. That's. Uh, I'm using Excel now because my brain is really not working. Um, so nine. Uh, 19 times 10, 190 pound a, uh, a print run uh, is that times three. So with one printer on the lower end, I could do 570 quid a day. At the top end, uh, oops, not minus 10. At the top end, 13, 20, 1,320 pounds worth of stock with one model. Um, but then, if I would have, if I have, if I get seven printers, so if we get our max capacity in the room, then we're producing between four grand a stock a day and ten grand a stock a day <clears throat> with seven printers. So if Crystal Collapse picks up to the point where we are run, we are rammed mad with uh, with product, um, then. And, and requirement and then obviously we can cater for it ourselves up to a point uh, and if we exceed that then I mean honestly if I'm doing 10 grand a day I'll quite happily hire a unit and um, you know get some staff on board to help out because you know share the wealth and everything you know How much time does it take? About five seconds a model.
I mean, you've seen the support. I, I need to do a video of them being cleaned up, to be honest. But the... Um... <laughs> oh, yeah. To, to be fair, like, I mean, the, the, the clean-up is so... So when I do my clean-up, what I do... Um... And I'll have to do a video of this at some point once I've sorted out the print room a little bit and it's tidied up and I can actually film in there properly without being ashamed of it. <laughs> the, uh, it's still a building site from when I put the wall up. I've got all my building materials all stashed in there still. Um, but yeah, the... Uh, let me just sort this bit out. So yeah, the plan, the plan with the models, you know, it has been for a long time. Like when I do my supports, the reason I, do, I hand place every single support is because I know, and if I show you the models here, I've got a build plate lined up ready to go on um, for some customer prints now. So like, let me just isolate this down to just the Vampire Lord, for example. Forget everything else that's on the order plate at the moment, but. Let me just show you this one guy. Okay. So here he is. So this is the supports for this one model. Now, if I put mini supports in, the mini supports stick to the model, um, and they have to be cleaned off with a knife. So I try and avoid the mini supports. Like up here, Lychee wants to put mini supports in here. So this bit of hair would have a mini support on it, comes down and contacts the neck or something. So. And what I've done is I've used Lighty Pro and I've positioned all of these supports to come off this one tree. Now this tree here is in front of the model and this pulls off towards me, towards the screen now. So this, this particular support breaks away without leaving any damage to anything it's touching um, and it comes away cleanly to the front of the model. You see my base of my model's not cluttered up. I've got an amount here on the feet where I need anchors which are going to stop the model from pulling off the base and falling into the vat and whatever. So I've got I've got a higher density of supports at the lowest islands but everything else I've got a, sing, a single uh, a single body coming up and then I'll tee off that and take all these like mini supports off but no supports cross over so I've got like little trees of supports coming out and joining onto stuff but there's no kind of like there's no like networks of you can do yeah I mean if it's going high up I tend to uh, for a 32mm model I mean the height of this one is uh, let me just show you so the size of this model is to the highest point is 40 millimeters so it's not that tall if I was if I was going up to like 60 mil or 70 mil then yeah, I'd probably make that into a thicker support, so the body would probably end up being thicker. But what you can tend, what you can do, and which what I do tend to do, is I'll do this. So, so you've got like here, we've got a cluster of the supports. So rather than having one thick support, we'll have three or four or four, three, four, five smaller ones where the bodies connect. So that gives that itself gives us more strength in that area. Um, but rather than using like a, a heavy support with a, you know, one millimetre tip, we put um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven supports in this area. They're all 0.24 millimetre tips, and seven supports with a 0.24 millimetre tip is like 1.1.64 millimetres, I think it is, something like that. Yeah, exactly, and then. When you come to break it off, and you, you, you snap it away from the thing. You don't have to use clippers or anything else. That'll just snap away clean. There'll be no damage to the model. The tips don't touch, but the bodies do. It comes away clean. Uh, you don't have to go back in and do any post-processing or any additional cleanup. You just pull these bits off. And as long as you're not over-curing the model when you're uh, printing. If you're under-curing it, it's not going to print. Gonna, it's going to fail because the tips are small. If your support, uh, if your calibration is on point and you your exposures are perfect, these will be just nicely set and not enough that you're um, you're going to leave divots in the model. And it it it, it is honestly it's brilliant. Thank you, yeah, yeah, for the uh, for the championing there. They if you if you if you want to try them for yourself, right, go onto my website, go to thelionstower.com, 
Um, we've got on there, let me just show you. Um, like that. So go to lionstower.com, go to uh, the products, we've got free STLs. Uh, and there's four models on here for free. So this guy is a double figure. This is based on a um, on a, the, a a model, a statue, a wooden statue that's in the uh, Salar Young um, Museum, and it's uh, Mephistopheles. And it's basically there's one figure on the front and one figure on the back. It's a single model that is like a you know a thing, uh, and it views differently from the front and from the back. We've got little fat cats, and then we've got uh, a a Grizzled Witch Hunter, and we've got an Orc Barbarian. Now, all of these models are free. You can just download them and add them to your cart and buy them. Um, they're all pre-supported, and you'll you'll see firsthand how easy they clean up and everything else. If, you, if you're not sure about it, you think the supports are too small, or you know there's other dramas, give them a whirl because they are, they're just they're just nice. Uh, and anything you buy from the store, any any pre-supported models you pick up from the store. They're all going to come with the same uh, same quality supports that are just going to clean up super easy. And I do it because I'm selling these models as resin models in my own store. I'm printing them off for people. I'm producing these things and I don't want to be spending hours and hours and hours cleaning up models. Um, it's just, it, they've got to be easy, otherwise it's not viable, do you know what I mean? So, go and have a little look. We've got like, you know, oh, we've got a little sale set there. I forgot they're on sale still. Ten pound instead of thirteen pound. Get yourself a bargain, people. Um, but yeah, have a little look in there. See what's uh, see if anything takes your fancy. But you'll have a lovely experience with the uh, with the supports, and you can watch any of the videos I've done about supports as well. There's one where I actually did these supports on stream. You'll see it happening um, a couple of weeks back. You'll see them happening. Give them a go. Print them out and try them out and see what you think. Um, so yeah, guys, I'm gonna put you on a BRB. I'll run to Lou, grab myself a coffee, and I'll be back in in just a minute. Okay, guys. So as I've showed you the store now, you can feel free to go and have a little purchase and uh, buy something. I'm gonna give you guys a discount code as well. So uh, if you want to use that, you can use it. Give you 25% off STLs, I think. That's about it, right? There you go. So you can head into the website, you can go get yourself a discount, um, and I will be, BRB, I'll be back in a couple of minutes with a fresh brew, ready to uh, crack on and do some more Ratman sculpting. Do not go away people, uh, if you've got any questions, fire them in the chat and I'll pick them up when I come back in. Give me a second, I'll be back in a minute.
Okay, guys, back in. Um, Sorry, guys, give me a second. Um, okay, let's try and warm my hands up a bit because it's freezing out in the garden. And let's get this, uh, let's get this little wrap made. <clears throat> okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy here and I'm going to flip his toes. We'll have one where the other leg is forward and uh, we'll switch that way. For the uh, Units that will be fine. We just need two leg poses. I don't think we want to do any more than that. Maybe the champion musician and the uh, banner bearer. This character code didn't work. Music level is that is that better? Yeah. <clears throat> ah, no, your light is expired. It's live now. Yeah, sorry about that. I didn't realise there was an expiry date on that code. It should have been it should have been stayed live. Okay, so we now take this fist I've made. I'm going to duplicate that. We're going to merge it back down into the body we've got. Yeah. 
Right, now, <clears throat> I've got a problem here. Because this is not going to work, is it? choices. Right, now remember I said these are for metal casting. Didn't really want to have these guys <coughs> having to have um, separate arms if I can help it. They can be one piece and that's all the better. Polishing to the elbow with some uh, sculptures promo. Let's sharpen the elbow a bit. We'll have some fur later, but not right now. Just going to sculpt a bit of uh, thickness to the wrist because, again, metal models, we want them to be thicker, not thinner. Yeah, the hand's oversized, but minutes that's what we need at the moment okay, that 
it'll do for now. combined in there. I need to close this gap which is not ideal. That'll do, that'll be fine. Let's close that up. Right, so that now, I think we can get away with that, I suppose. And here's when it's going to get sneaky, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two or three poses. And then I'm going to re... Um, redo some of the details on them. Last things I'm going to deal with are the tails. So I'm just going to make a whole set of these tails. No worries, yeah, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, keep your eyes peeled for the mailing list uh, shout out later. After I've done a set of these with uh, sword and shield, we're going to do, well, say hand weapon and shield, because we'll do some with clubs and maces and things, and maybe a few other, uh, like I say, axes and hatchet type weapons and things. But once we've done that, we're going to go and do um, a set of spearmen. And then also we need some slingers. And then we'll have to take some and make some gunners, do some mini gunners, do a flamethrower team. 
couple of weapon teams. We need to do some uh, grenadiers. With the poison balls. Okay, so let's duplicate that. Let's flip it. Right, so we're on, we're on one o'clock now. Let's see how many of these we can get done by two. Formed all the uh, muscles there, let's just get them back in. How do we come up with armor options? Um, do you know what? I think a lot of it is just kind of, kind of working through things and just having like a. It's like for me, I've been, <clears throat> I've been collecting miniatures for thirty-five years, painting models. Um, I play loads of, uh, loads of video games. We watch loads of movies, and I, I watch a lot of anime and stuff like that. You kind of end up with this whole kind of visual library in your brain of like influences and things that you've seen and I always look at the armors and the um, the outfits and stuff like that of all the characters that are, appear on screen or whatever or all the models that are painted and whatever <clears throat> so you've got to have this kind of um, this visual kind of mental library if you like or you go on something like Pinterest and um, Google and stuff and you start searching for kind of like armor choices, armor options and things and you can go through and uh, find things that you like the look of. Particularly if you want if you want a consistent style, say if you're looking for like a Chinese inspired or Japanese inspired armors, you collect a little library of them. Um, if you want Western European styled armors, obviously search for that and uh, stash it in. You've got to look at functionality as well as functionality and practicality <clears throat> as well as kind of mobility so for these guys they're not going to be heavily armored because they're just um, they're kind of expendable infantry so we, we don't want them to be too kind of like you know too tough or anything at the moment um,
and their armor is going to be quite simple and, and crude and rudimentary. <coughs> so, uh, <coughs> yeah, it's um, it depends on your design, it depends what you're doing, but also, like I say, having that kind of like mental kind of um, data bank of options is really, really useful. <clears throat> You've got to think about the aesthetics of what you're trying to achieve as well. So, like I say here, they're, they're going to be looking like, you know, like they like they crawled out of a sewer is my, my goal. This one, I'm going to pick a different head. Oh, that's the one I've just used, I think. So we have that one, this one. Now again, these guys are all going to get like some fur added and stuff like that, so they're not going to be like left as they are. No, I don't do anything in 2D. I, I, I concept everything on the fly, so you'll sometimes see I'll start doing something and then I'll end up scrubbing it and throwing it away. Um... <clears throat> I find it's just quicker for me to just do everything in 3D immediately. So let's say for this guy then, let's go for a... Uh, again, in the spirit of keeping it quick and dirty. So what I've done here is I've just duplicated the legs. Here we go. Like you asked earlier about how to how to how to work fast in the. Uh, I think it was you. No, was it was it you? Somebody asked about working fast. <clears throat> so this is one. This is one of my tips for for doing armors and things. the uh, Sculptress Pro mode, clone the body parts I want to armour up, sculpt directly onto them with the armour, Polish, clay build up. I'll use uh, orb cracks for doing sharp edges.
sonuçta. Got a couple of armor plates now on the legs. We'll do a strap around the back. Oops, let's uh, turn RGB off on that one. <coughs> okay, so there's a little bit of armour on a foot. This guy. Or one of these guys at least. Um, and still got on his leg as well. So So we go for again all cracks around the outside, give me a bit more raised definition on the edges, make the edges sharper. Guys, let me just mute you while the uh, wife just rings. Give me a second. So my wife telling me she's on the way home. <laughs> Let's see your uh, what are you working on, mate? Ah, sorry, selecting it there and then. <laughs> no, no, no. She's. I told her I was streaming, and then she tried to squeeze in another hundred things before she got off the phone.
Oh, that's coming on really well, mate. It's looking really good. Yeah, that's coming on really well. You gotta be pleased with that, though, yeah. Gotta be nearly finished, hasn't you? <coughs> yeah, it's able to be over. <laughs> yeah, that's what happens when you're working on something for too long, isn't it? This is why I try and do these things here like this. You know, like the uh, when I did the, the bee the other day, the bee mushroom thing. Like my my goal with that was to try and keep it on one stream. So trying to keep the sculpt to like two hours. I wasn't even fussed about getting a finished a finished model in that period. It did get finished in the end, but that wasn't my goal. My goal was to just kind of just allocate time to it and just only spend that on it, and then it doesn't take up too much uh, too much of my time, and I can move on and do something else afterwards. I so say working like this when you're doing iterative things and not having to worry about the. Uh... You know. The final textures and stuff too much. It's quite good for like your. Your morale actually. Because. In fact, you know what? You should have a go at the uh, little mushroom. Mushroom bee kind of. Uh, like competition prompt. Uh, not competition, the challenge prompt. <coughs> because. When you complete something and you actually finish it and uh, get something kind of ticked off your list, it gives you a massive, like, little, you know, energy boost, a um, bit of confidence boost, make you feel good about yourself. And then you feel like you can do anything then. So if you've got a job, like, you know, that's taken forever and it's like it feels like it's a chore, do something you can tick off as a quick win first and then go and get into it. Ah, groovy. Do you know what I was thinking I want, I'd, I'd like to do? I'm not going to do it, but I'd like to. You know, um, what's it called? Like Royal Match and all of these kind of stupid games where they show you these games. Uh, Ebony, Ebony, oh, fuck, Ebony, I hate that game. All of these uh, adverts that they show you for, you know, they, they advertise the game or something, and then when you play the game, it's like a kingdom build, and it's like, what happened to the puzzle thing I, was, I thought I was buying into? I'd like to just make the puzzle games. Just take the ideas that they keep showing you and then actually make it and go, guys, this actually isn't a kingdom builder, this is just a puzzle game. You know, how's that for novel? <clears throat> I still can't believe they can get away with the way they uh, advertise these things. Like, this is such false advertising, it's ridiculous. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, guys, I'm just going to um, use my masking, and I'm going to mask off just the armour plates. It bits in between as well, but mostly just the armour plates. <coughs> ah, delicious in dungeon. It's good, isn't it? I think... I think we watched this Thursday. Yeah, raspberries and raspberries and meat. I think it was called this Thursday. So I just want to mask. I just want to mask off just the bits I'm working on here. Just just these uh, these sections. If I get a bit more than I wanted, it's not the end of the world. So I've got to screw it back anyway.
beyond journey's end. All right. Where do I find that? Is that a Crunchyroll one or is it a Netflix? Or... Isolated the armor from the uh, leg. I've masked it off now. I've extracted, well, I say I've extracted, I've polygrouped it with the dynamesh. Solidified the, uh, the bits I need. So now what I'm doing is just going in and I'm just carving away to remove excess bits of body that are left in between. Just make sure you've got. Uh, Sculptures Pro Mode up here. <coughs> Anywave. I heard that one. Is that an app or a, like a website? Anyway, better than country roll then. Or... I need to watch Grand Blue again, I do, you know. I think they've made it free on YouTube, if I remember right. Or at least some of the episodes. There's two seasons of it, I think. each of these armour plates and then on the raised border I'm going to put a couple of uh, like little like little bead type things like bead details How are you doing? Good afternoon to you too. Let's drop it in today. You a Ratman fan? What 
what you said. So we got Borax JWX in the uh, in the chat. I said hello and asked if he was a Ratman fan. <clears throat> okay, so I'm just going to do some of these kind of details now. I'm going to use different sizes for these. So this is my general size I'm going to put in. <laughs> awesome sauce. Now I think I've just called you Borax. But I know it's Borax, isn't it? Because it's the uh, it's a reference to Borax the Despoiler, isn't it? Borax is a cleaning product. <laughs> it's not a cat man, it's not a cat aid. He's a rat. Uh, oh god, now I haven't read the Forgotten Realms, but I've read the, the Drizzt series. Um, or a lot of them at least, but I haven't read all of all of lot the Forgotten Realms ones. Oh, what are you thinking? This rule if it's getting in my way and doing my editing. So is that for the hand I made? So that's it. <laughs> Am I right that it's a Chaos Warrior reference, though, Borak? <clears throat> As in Lord Borak the Despoiler. Actually, he was a Blood Bowl player, wasn't he? If I remember right. One of these star players for the Chaos team. Yeah, yeah, that's it. One little arm a second and merge down. Do you know I don't think I've seen a new version of him?
sure what's going on there. It was pulling. It wasn't kind of affecting it at all then for a minute. Mass off. That's why it's doing all the jarring kind of cuts like that. <coughs> you gave your friend the best life advice ever. Never wear your socks in the bath. <laughs> Not a bad shirt, mate.
Right, I think I've just sculpted into what I can't cast. In fact, I know I have. Let's split that off. This one, I do not care about the actual body itself. I'm just focusing on the armor. <clears throat> this is going to be like an overlay. Like that. So, all I'm interested in is the, uh, the shapes that are sitting above. Okay.
Right, so a few bits of armour on this guy. The school helmets on a symmetrical version, really, I think. <clears throat> Super lopsided. Let's do this in there, symmetry. It's one of these situations where I was saying about earlier where if something's not working you've got to be prepared to drop it. Do I keep the helmet even though it's all lopsided and not quite perfect? Well he's a sewer rat. <clears throat> so I can probably get away with it if I'm honest.
Hey, Jim, how are you doing, mate? It was doing really well, thank you. So it's my wife's 40th birthday the weekend, so we've had a little bit of a quiet one. Um, I promised I'd do no work over the weekend. Didn't quite keep the promise. I did do a few little bits and bobs because we've got Crystal Claps ready to launch. But other than that, we had a lovely family weekend and uh, it was nice and chilled. Um, how about yourself, mate? What have you been up to? Cobble Bard. <clears throat> it's pretty specific. <clears throat> Have you had a look at um, John Popson's stuff, Effing Core Miniatures? I'd imagine if anyone's got a Cobble Bard, it'd be him. Or um, War Clock, actually. War Miniatures. So it's not the kind of thing Alex or John might have done. <laughs> well, mate, if you've got a spec you want to send it over, I can always see if I can rustle one up for you. That's a quick job. Made up a single mini store. This buckle, as an example, is one of the things you'll find in my uh, component library. So if you find yourself in need of like a, a buckle, it's uh, a good one to just pull in at a moment's notice and just fill a void. Save you a bit of effort. I'm not doing Patreon now though, I'm off for, uh, for miniatures so I need something to use for uh, like demo models, for tutorials and you know other bits that might be a useful one to do. <clears throat>
Better let that go through and before it crashes on me and dies. Okay, so anytime we're doing notches and bits like this in the belt, um, it's notches, scratches, whatever else it is, always make sure you've got the uh, lazy mouse turned off. Lazy mouse off, small draw size, large intensity, and it'll make your uh, strokes nice and powerful. This one, we're going to duplicate. We're going to, flip, uh, we're going to mirror it on the Z axis, which is front to back. And then we're just going to bring it into here. And I'm going to split it. This base is doing weird, and it's to hide the base.
I'll do lots of little bits of work tidying up and closing gaps here and stuff because well, it's not good is it <coughs> basically Alright, I've decided I don't like the armor. Not on this guy. There you go guys, prime example. Not getting over the uh, overly fixed on the particular details <clears throat> being prepared to drop it at any moment and actually sucking it off
pull that through. I don't remember that being so extreme. I screwed something up there, haven't I? That's why not to use laser mouse when you're trying to do uh, notches and things. It doesn't actually register on short strokes.
Oh, let's do a Ristra. Oh, let's do a Ristra. In fact, let me save it and see if I've got any Ristra saved. <coughs> Surprise myself there. Mirror his arms. So let's mirror him back. Let's take his hands off. Let's mirror his hands now. And we'll position this one up here. these holes
Well, let's grab this one a different head. And a different mantle, I think. Hey, Adam, how you doing, mate? Yeah, it's mostly components, to be honest. I've been building odds and sods and then trying to assemble them together. So we've got like three variations of him there. Three down, uh, seven more to go, I think. It's going, going alright today, mate. She's got a wife calling, let me just mute you a second. Right guys, looks like I'm doing school run tonight, uh, today, so I've got to be uh, wrapping up in about 10-15 minutes or so. Base mess of miscellaneous components is something I need to learn in the future. I have my own Beastman uh, beast race in mind, but never scored to humans before. Be sure to watch the stream and make some notes. To be honest, the base mesh I made already uh, ahead of time, mate, so you won't get anything out of that one. <laughs> I, need to do, uh, I need to do a little bit of that on stream at some point. But for these guys, I just needed to get something done. Um, I'd normally just typically start with a, a normal human um, 
base mesh, you know, like the 32mm the benchmark model we used for the uh, challenge model. So start with that one, and then um, basically just go over it and just reposition bits as you need to. Ah, do you know what I'm going to do? That's an idea. I think it is. Now what I would say is you can make a um, you can make a brush that will do this with like a, is it a VDM or an, uh, an alpha um, and kind of do stitches for you, draw it, draw them for you, but then they all look the same. Um, if you want any kind of like variety in them, then it's good to just do them yourself. But they're easy enough, aren't they? You know, they're quite a simple thing to add. Nice little bit of chunky extra detailing. Let's have a little look and see how different these three look together. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clone the base. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two more then. Nine. But I wouldn't normally go ten wide for other units, but for like a clan rat type unit where it's um, there's a lot of them basically. Thank you. 
No, I will have to come in and fur these guys. Oh yeah, I know, mate. But, well, the thing is, the tail's sticking backwards. The tails are placeholders at the moment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do like five or six different tails, and they'll be sprued together. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll have little studs on them that they can plug into uh, little holes in their bums. So, because they're going to be the, the plan is for these things to be cast in metal, um, which actually that one is not going to work, is it? This is not going to work as a metal cast yet. So none of these have got any fur at the moment, they're all bald rats at the moment, so uh, they will have fur eventually. Yeah, no worries mate, you send me a message, let me know when you're free, and we'll book something in.
Okay, so let's um, change that bit there. Let's do a little extract. Save first. <coughs> Bit much. Too much more. Still too much. One seven eight. Perfect. Gonna touch up the battle here, and then I'm gonna have to finish because I'm on time now. So I'm just literally randomly hacking into the bottom of these, and what I'll do is I'll dynamesh it again, polish it, tidy them up, and then we'll add some um, <coughs> some extra detail in around those. Get some trousers. I'm gonna add a, um, a rope belt onto that one. But for now, guys, I'm gonna to need to say uh, thank you all for joining me today on the stream. I'll be back tomorrow with another one. We'll carry on with some uh, more rat men. So, today, what we've got done, uh, there you go, four rat men kind of about 80 90 percent of the way there. So, tomorrow, we'll do uh, a couple more. We'll work our way through uh, some extras and once we've got seven of the normal guys we need to do the hero then the hero the, sorry the champion the musician and the banner bearer 
Uh, if you've got any ideas uh, you'd like to see incorporated in this little unit, then let me know. Um, any weapon options or whatever else, then uh, hit me up on Discord. Uh, and otherwise, I'm going to uh, clock off and I'll say see you later, taters. Um, back tomorrow at 10.30. Thanks again for joining me, uh, and adios, people. <laughs>